Okay, it's me and Santiago. We're standing here on the back porch. Hello there. <laughs> Playing with a new camera. So yeah, we're gonna go tomorrow to Cuenca, and Monday we'll see a surgeon, see about getting my ticker fixed, and uh, we'll see what happens, and we'll let you know. Yeah, and so that's Bill Cabamba behind us. We may blow that up tomorrow. We don't know, we're thinking about it. What do you think, we should blow up Bill no. Cabamba or leave it? Okay, we'll leave it, yeah. We like a few places here. Yeah, yeah, Santi's family <laughs> lives there, so we don't wanna do that. Okay, perfecto. Hey everyone, it's me sitting in a hospital uh, Wednesday morning. Just got done with breakfast, yay, hospital food. But at least I managed to finagle some coffee because I was going through caffeine withdrawals last night, I think. And uh, yeah, so doing okay. Um, we're scheduled for one o'clock on Thursday for the surgery. Doctor came in last night, told us I'm gonna have a team of 10 people working on me, two surgeons and um, you know, my outcome prognosis is good. Um, they are got to have to clean up some scar tissue and things in there um, before they can sew the new valve in, but it'll be, you know, a pretty good recovery. Um, be in a hospital here in ICU, like maybe two or three days, and then uh, in the hospital a couple of days, and then I have to kind of hang out here in Cuenca for about a week go back and forth for appointments to, for them to check me before we can go back to Vilcabamba. So that's kind of the story and um, yeah, big differences in the, uh, the healthcare here. The doctors kind of do all their own work. They don't rely on nurses. You know, like the surgeon does his own echo, his own everything. Every doctor here, you know, cardiologist, they do the echo, EKG, everything right there in the office when you go see them. No waiting for appointments or anything like that. Um, nurses coming in are pretty effective. They come in and do their thing all night long, wake you up and then leave, just like the U.S. And uh, we've got, a, you know, of course, a private room, nice bed for Lisa over here, you know, better than you can expect, I would say. And uh, she said she had the best sleep last night that she's had the whole time since we've been here. So, yeah, things are going to plan and you know, just trying to keep from getting pneumonia while I'm here, and that's kind of always been my go-to, it seems like. But everything's good. Um, got the blood worked out. Doctor called his good buddy, who's the director at Red Cross, and told him, hey, look, be reasonable. And so they sent the blood over, and the blood's waiting for me. So I guess eight units of whole blood, eight, eight plasma, and... Uh, so, yeah, that's the story. I don't know what else to say at this point. We're just, you know, keep praying and um, God's will be done one way or the other. Have a great day. Ciao. Okay, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit and I owe you an update. Um, it's taken me a while to get to the point that I could actually make this video, so... You can stumble through it with me. Um, Joe had to go in for um, heart surgery. I guess you could say it was almost emergency heart surgery, but we did get there on our own. Um, he had a heart valve replacement 15 years ago, and so he's gotten a really good 15 years out of that. Um, we met with the surgeons in Cuenca and um, everything looked really good. Uh, spirits were high as we were going into the surgery. Done this before, no big deal. We can do it again and everything will be fine. Um, he was joking with surgeons and nursing staff and everybody else in typical Joe style, right up to surgery. So when he went into surgery, um, there were a lot of complications in the surgery. Uh, the first one being that the, uh, the valve that they were going to replace, there wasn't enough uh, heart wall to replace the valve. And so it was, uh, the surgeon said it was just like uh, tissue paper. And so that whole side of the heart was, had already failed basically. Um, 
So to try to keep it together, they had him on bypass um, way too long as they tried to get the valve in. Um, you could say that he passed right there on the table and never made it out. Um, but they put him on uh, the heart machine and they kept the heart beating um, and got him into ICU or UCI from here. Uh, though his heart was beating, it was not regular. He was still having all the complications that he had before going in and that his pulse would go too low. His um, heart was extremely erratic. And so the valve replacement really didn't uh, do what it needed to do. Uh, he never woke up, um, but it just, once he got into the ICU, uh, he deteriorated rapidly. So the, the guy that was the head of the ICU, um, I met with him and uh, he agreed that if he took another turn for the worse, that he would um, help him go peacefully. So that's what happened. He went peacefully. Um, it was a, uh, a shock for all of us left behind. We fully expected that he would come out without any issues, but uh, Joe and surgery, they don't always go hand in hand. He has a mind of his own, so. So this video is dedicated in Joe's memory. He had a long, full life. But if you knew him at all, you knew the last couple of years he's been struggling. So now he's in the loving arms of our Lord and Savior, feasting like he's never feasted here on earth, dancing on the streets of gold in his glorified body. He's in a better place. For our followers and subscribers, we appreciate you greatly. I do plan to continue to make videos, though probably a bit different than Joe. But I will keep on making videos. Um, I do want to share what Ecuador has to offer. My experiences here and um, just all the beauty that is here on these beautiful days but it will be in my style, so a little bit different. So let's continue with the tribute to Joe. We'll see you next time. So there's an old house and it's, it's getting more and more tattered, more and more things that, that don't work and some of the things that still do work are hurting us now. But there's a new body coming, a new house that Jesus is preparing for us. Um, let me just read you this passage in uh, first, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 through 8. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. 
So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So you see, we have a new, a new house that's being prepared for us or has been prepared for us. And there'll be no more sickness or disability. There'll be love and companionship. You know, so many of Jesus' parables talking about the, the kingdom of heaven. And what figure does he use? A wedding. A wedding would be, for many of his audience, the only party that they've ever been to. Jesus was describing heaven as a party. So what would, what would his audience expect at a wedding? Pie, music, dancing, laughing, visiting with other people, nice clothing, everybody's all clean and dolled up. Yeah, that's what heaven's going to be like, as best as we can picture it. It's a party from which we never have to leave, you know, because it's sad when the party's over, isn't it? That's a party that's eternal. It goes on and on. I want to miss uh, Joe picking me up as I'm walking. He's, he passed by as I was walking down the highway to come into town, and he'd stop and pick me or me and Patty up, and, and he'd, he'd be laughing and joking. and uh, He made friends so easily. I suppose he must have had some enemies, but it's just hard to imagine somebody not liking to be with Joe. He always treated me well. I know he didn't agree with everything that I do and believe and say, but uh, he always treated me with respect. And uh, I hope I did him the same way. Good model for us. So that song, uh, ain't you gonna need this house no longer. Well, we do need to take reasonable care of our present dwelling, but remember, that it is only temporary and that the Lord will soon completely remodel it as it was originally designed if we placed our faith in Jesus. Drew and I are, about, are pretty close to the same age, if not the same age. And I remember when I first met Joe, uh, we were going to come to the meetings that he held here for the home, homestead group. And he said, first of all, we got some rules. <laughs> And he started going through the rules. And I was like, who is this guy? We got rules to grow food? <laughs> and yes, we did. We had rules, not so much about growing food, but how things were to be done. Um, and uh, so I got to a place where I really looked up to Joe. Even though we were the same age, I really looked up to him. He's like having a big brother. Um, he had been through a lot of things, and, and the time that we spent around each other. We got to share our lives a little bit. So we, I knew that we both were very involved in church. Of course, he was a pastor for several years. And um, I was pretty easy to tell that he was a pastor uh, when I first met him because pastors have this way, it's almost like a Dale Carnegie course to be a pastor. Um, they have this way of them. When they want to make a point, they lean forward they smile, and their eyes get real big, and they shake their heads this way, right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the way I'll always remember Joe, because wherever he was up here, and he'd be making a point in those meetings. That's what he would, he would do, and I'll always remember that face. I'll always remember that action. And uh, I'm sure I'm really going to miss him because I was we were looking so forward to bringing him up to show, some, show him a property that we just bought, and the, let him show us how we should organize that property because he knew so much. And uh, I really wanted to tap into what he knew because I don't know anything. I hadn't grown a garden since I was six years old. So uh, I was really looking forward to spending the time with him. And uh, I know he's going to be very, very, very much missed in our lives. Chance to meet Joe. 
several years ago when I needed them the most. And um, I was starting a garden, and um, he helped me out big time in that, and um, helped, helped me. He's, I needed some stuff in the hardware, and I was re really busy at the time. Um, and uh, so let me go get that for you, Doug. So Chris, Christy had introduced us, and, uh, Joe and Lisa. And um, so, and um, there is no uh, neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor demons shall be able to separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus. And that is my hope. Because I'm going to see Jill again. And if you have any questions about that, I'll be happy to answer them. I'm sure Nolan, my wife, love to answer those. But we love Joe and Lisa, and we look forward to seeing Joe again. So. I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, Joe was a really good friend. We met when uh, he came here to, to Ecuador. Uh, we were very close. We did several things. Uh, he was a client of me. But more than that, we were friends. We called each other all the time, uh, take care of each other. Always with a big smile. Um, he loved, he's and Joe loves my family. I love you too. Uh, uh, I will miss a conversation with him. Such a honest and a good guy. Evan is going to be good with him. Thank you. No puedo hablar en inglés porque no puedo. <laughs> eh, conocí a yo hace algún tiempo y me inspiró mucho, mucho cariño. Eh, fue una persona que llegó a mi vida y a la vida de mi hermano con, con mucha generosidad con mucho amor y esperamos que todo ese amor y esa generosidad que le entregó aquí para la gente de su tierra, la gente de aquí de esta tierra, eh, sea recibido en el cielo con un brazo muy abierto, con mucho amor, como el que entregó aquí. No vamos a extrañar mucho. We, we were friends with Joe and, of course, Lisa, and um, we had been watching, um, you know, YouTube videos with them, or about them, and, um, you know, we immediately knew, because we're from Texas, they're from Texas, that we wanted to be friends with them. So I didn't know how to do that, because I would see them, you know, eating at cafes and stuff, and I said, well, I don't want to just impose on them. But one day I walked up to the car, and Joe and Lisa were in the car, and I said, I'd like to go to your you know, permaculture class or homestead class, and he goes, well, are you a troublemaker? <laughs> and I was like, no. He goes, and anybody you invite, they can't be a troublemaker either. So I said, okay, we won't. And so I sat quietly, didn't say anything for a long time. And then, um, you know, we always had fun uh, meeting for lunch, Sunday, fun day. Um, every Sunday and just talking and chatting and just really getting to, to know each other because Joe knows so many people and just has got his hands like in everything and so um, we wanted to try our hand at archery and you know I was like Joe is going to be incredible because like he's an expert marksman right and um, we got fooled a little because Lisa don't let her fool you <laughs> is like a great shot and um, it was just, it was fun getting to learn a new skill with them and just hanging out together and, um, you know, just living life. And he was an easy person for us to be around. And 
even the tinfoil hat thing, you know, you guys probably saw some of the videos with the tinfoil hat and all that. And so, you know, we love Joe dearly and Lisa. And um, I, I can say our life has truly been very enriched and blessed by both of them. And we are going to miss him quite a lot. But, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have Lisa and we're going to be by her side every time we get a chance. And we're going to make you come out and hang out and be around people because we love you. Well, um, the Lisa and I met Joe. We were just walking down the street and um, the Lisa was, oh, that's Joe. You know, we'd seen him in the videos and we'd never met him. And I don't know how long we've been here, maybe three or four months. And um, so we just introduced ourselves and, and he was very willing to talk to us. And um, the Lisa, my wife, was, is just an avid gardener. She, she was looking so forward to coming to Ecuador and having this great garden. And so, you know, he invited us to the homestead group and and like we're sitting in the front row and every chance she got she was asking Joe a question, you know, and and he was just so full of vitality and knowledge and willingness to help people. And that just came out so strongly. And then he started the photography group, and that's where my interest really from the poor, because I've been an avid photographer for many years, and being in a group of people that just love to take pictures is a lot of fun for me. And Joe and Lisa were just kind of getting started in the whole still photography thing. Joe had done a lot of video, but he hadn't done a lot of still. And he was just so open to it. didn't matter if you're using a cell phone or a Instamatic or you know, a big expensive equipment. He just welcomed everybody. And you know, we didn't know Joe very long, but he certainly filled our hearts. And I'm I just wish we'd had a little more time with him. But you know, it's up to us to carry on from you know what he left us with. And I intend to do that to whatever ability I can. I know a lot of you. My, my name's Dave Seaman, for those that I haven't met. I've been around you know, the Bahamas since 2015. I've known Joe for most of the time I've been here. And, uh, it's a sad day when he, he left us, but I, he left us with a lot of memories. And I, I wrote a poem for him. Oh, remembering Joe. How do we say goodbye to a friend who loved life? When the last word is said, what remains are memories. Not how did you die, but how did you live? Not what you gained, but what you gave. As a husband, you gave your faithful love in helpful ways. As a mentor, you gave guidance to others. As a friend, you are always there for those in need. Your projects all have your energy in them still. And, and will last past all life's boundaries. Each time one sees your projects, you will be remembered. There is no death without a birth, no winter without a spring. Beyond this life's transition, our hearts will once more sing. Your body leaves us now, but your contributions remain in our hearts and minds until we meet again. Thank you for being you and for being here. We now bid you adieu. As your soul soars high and returns to the light where rainbows are born.
Thank you.